Hey kids, Grandpa here. Okay, so this is going to be the first in, uh, or second, I guess, the second in the series of how to start a homestead with little or no money. In this particular case, we're going to look at raising meat chickens and uh, how you can do that cost effectively and, uh, and make some money with it. So in our previous video, we talked about how to get land uh, for little or no cost uh, up front, and now we're going to show you how to pay for that land. So let's go ahead and jump right into it. I'm going to start out by talking a little bit about uh, the finances and the infrastructure, and then we'll go from there. So let's go ahead and jump to the spreadsheet first thing. Okay, so here we have the uh, the layout. Whoops, see, I, have, I, I converted this from a video I did about laying chickens, and now I've got to do meat chickens. So sorry about that little error there. Okay, first thing we're going to look at is when I look at buying property, I think of a farm. You know, I, w I want about 40 acres to get me away from somebody else. And if I'm going to build a house, you know, I don't need a big house, but, you know, there are certain things I want. And so if you're going to buy a home or, or, or buy land to have a homestead on, uh, you know, you got to start with a number someplace. So if you're going to buy land, I'm saying you could buy land here in Ohio. I could buy 40 acres for about $120,000. And for another $120,000, I could put a house on it and spend $240,000. That, <clears> that gives me a cost per acre of $6,000 an acre or $0.14 cents a square foot. Raising meat chickens will require a 40 by 40 foot area which is 1,600 square feet, and that would raise 500 chickens inside of that area. Okay. And apparently I should have deleted all this stuff because that was all there for the other chickens. Property taxes. Property taxes on this property here in Ohio, about $2,800 a year, 70 an acre, 0 0.0016 cents per foot. <coughs> okay, so... I also am going to include in here a rent versus own comparison. If you were to rent, as we showed in the previous video, you could rent a house on an acre of land that you could homestead on here in Ohio for $900 a month. You also have to pay your utilities. Of course, you'd have to do that anyway if you owned your own house, but you wouldn't have to pay the property taxes on it. So if you rent that house for $900 an acre, you'll have 0 0.02 cents is your cost per square foot. Two cents. If you own that property plus pay taxes on it, figuring you spent two hundred forty thousand dollars to buy the property, but you amortize that over thirty years, you you calculate your property taxes, you figure that annually. Anyhow, we'll see how that breaks down. But to own the property, it actually costs you point zero zero six two six per year per square foot versus two cents. So it's a lot cheaper in the long run to own your land as opposed to rent. But if you don't have the big down payment money, uh, you can certainly rent. That's certainly an option. All right, let's get to the spreadsheet. So we have the cost of the land and we have the property taxes. This is what it's going to cost you uh, per year. Uh, I'm sorry, this is the allocation for a 40 by 40 foot area. Calculated out by its uh, allocation for how long it's going to last. Gives you a per year cost. You're going to raise meat chickens. You're going to go out and buy them. Okay, let's start off by talking about meat chickens because that's the place that uh, we can spend the most amount of time and money. Uh, uh, the bird that you want to raise is going to be the Cornish cross, uh, Cornish rock cross chicken, jumbo Cornish crosses. Um, you can buy them from any number of hatcheries. This is a particular one here in Ohio that's been popular, Mount Healthy. I bought from them before. I've had some, some good deliveries. I've had some bad deliveries from them. There's a number, there's a plethora of hatcheries in America. Uh, try to find one local to you so you can pick up as opposed to deliver. And uh, try to buy your, your birds directly. Now, up in Alaska, I had to have them shipped to me. So I had a huge loss in shipping every year, no matter almost no matter whoever I bought them from. I actually found a hatchery that was down in Georgia that I could get them shipped to me faster than any other hatchery. So I only got them in two days instead of four days. Also, when you're buying for commercial applications, ignore this pricing. Okay, this is for homeowners. 
call up, tell them you want to buy 500 birds, you want to buy 1,000 birds, or over the next year, you're going to buy however many birds you plan on buying, 2,000, 3,000, 6,000, 10,000, whatever it is, and let them give you an actual price. Uh, the last time I raised birds, I called around, I ended up buying birds at 96 cents a piece. 96, not a dollar 60. So you can get some pretty big uh, discounts. I called around this week and I got a price from somebody. Uh, they they said they would be able to do it for me at a dollar 25, buying 500 at a time. So 625 dollars for your birds. You need feeders to feed the birds with. Um, we use the standard. Where's my example here? Now well, hard to see in this picture. So you can, this is our standard setup that we have. We use this kind of a feeder, these kinds of waters, little towers, um, little, sometimes little plastic tubs too. They seem to work fairly well for what we are doing. So there's your feeder and your water. <clears throat> now you need brooders to keep them warm. So let's take a look at brooders. We're going to go back to that same picture. Uh, actually, we're going to go to this picture. <clears throat> this is the setup that we have uh, before we bring the chickens into it. You can see we have three waters in there. We have two Ohio brooders. This is an Ohio brooder. It's a plywood box. Now, these have been around for years and years and years and years. The Ohio brooder was originally developed at Ohio State University in, I think, 1932, which is about the same year I think plywood actually came out. So um, what this is is four feet wide, five foot long. These sides are 12 inches tall. These feet are 16 inches tall, the legs, and what you do is you build a two by two square frame inside here. Uh, you attach this sheet to it and then you screw the sides on. And so you end up with a four inch lip here on the sides. And you also end up with a four inch spacing down below. Now this spacing can be adjusted any number of ways. This electric line comes down. On the other side of this plywood, there is an electrical uh, lamp holder. There's an electrical box with a lamp holder attached to it, a porcelain lamp holder, and a heat lamp. So you have a heat lamp on this side. You have a heat lamp on this side in this Ohio brooder. <clears throat> and what that does is it creates a giant hen. This makes for one big, huge hen that all the biddies can walk underneath, they can walk underneath, they can get warm, and they can walk out. <clears throat> a four foot by four foot Ohio brooder is said to be adequate for 200 biddies. I have uh, a four by four and a four by five here, and uh, we've been able to run 500 biddies underneath that setup, and it works very well. Now this is a 10 foot wide, 20 foot long, shelter logic greenhouse. Let me bring that up here. There you go. Shelter Logic Greenhouse. You can buy these at Tractor Supply Company. $400 for one. They, uh, they work very well. They have little roll-up sides. They're weighted. They have zippered doors on them. They have uh, the, the zippered sides can roll down, so they become a bit of a sod cloth. I build a wood frame underneath mine, and then I take some 2 by 2 and I screw the side cloths down. And I seal the bottom of the greenhouse against drafts to keep any drafts and or critters from getting up inside there. So these work very well. Let's go back to our spreadsheet. We're getting a little ahead of ourselves. <clears throat> All right. So we need two Ohio brooders. Then you have to have lamp holders in them and bulbs. We put pine shavings down for bedding. And you've seen our greenhouses that we use. I put a wood frame around the bottom. The bottom is 10 foot by 20 foot. So what I'll do is I'll buy some 20 foot six by sixes and uh, and some 10 foot six by sixes and make them into a frame. Or as you saw in the picture, uh, I simply just used some logs. I just cut some trees and dovetailed them together and built a little log frame and framed that out and then attached the plastic. Now, Using dimensional lumber was actually uh, an improvement over the log. The problem with the log is that sometimes the biddies were getting here on the outside of the log and getting stuck down in there. So uh, we did this initially, but then we went over to using uh, dimensional lumber, and that proved to be superior for us. So 
<clears throat> all these items, you have the cost of the item uh, amortized by how long it lasts. And so you have an actual year cost, actually what it costs per that year on each of those items. Okay. Then we went to Premier One Fencing. Now, this is got to be the best tool that's come out for the farmer uh, in my lifetime. Uh, this stuff is awesome. It comes on a 168 foot uh, uh, bundle. It is two by two, uh, two by two down at the bottom, graduating to go larger. So it'll even contain uh, pretty good sized little biddies. Of course, we don't let them out of the greenhouse into the net area until they get a little size to them. Uh, they spend the first few weeks just inside the greenhouse. But when you release them out of this poultry netting, they'll get shocked by this and stay inside. More importantly, any critters out there wanting to eat my biddies will uh, will stay outside. So <clears throat> we buy the uh, the 1248-3 kit. It's a 164-foot roll. Uh, with four, so it's $194 for that. Now, the reason I like this kit at the 164-foot roll, it makes a 40-foot by 40-foot square. And that's an ideal size to put around the 10 by 20 greenhouse. So when they do get older, they've got some ground to get out and scratch around on and, uh, and do their thing. So, okay, we also, Lily, quiet. Lily, quiet. We have a nurse here looking at my uh, my ex-wife's husband, so the dog's all upset. Lily, come here. You be quiet now. Sit. Sit. Now they're talking outside, so we're going to have a lot of barking here. Apologize for that, folks, but that's life on the farm. Anyhow, we use the Premier One fencing, and we also use the Premier One electric fence chargers. And let's go to Energizers. And, you know, any of these work just perfectly uh, with that netting. Um, you can buy some of these smaller, lighter ones that work off of 110 or batteries. Uh, they'll work fine. And usually they're big enough to power at least two uh, lengths of netting. So you could actually power two pins with that. Um, so... I tend to buy the ones here that, you know, cost a couple hundred bucks and, you know, that's, that seems like it works just perfect for us. So, <clears throat> all right. So then you have your fence charger. Uh, we have to buy a feed scoop. You need one of those. You need some feed barrels. You need some utility costs to power, power the thing. Need a chicken plucker. I like using pluckers like this. You do not want to be raising meat chickens commercially without a decent commercial chicken plucker. This plucker here, uh, you throw, take the water or the, the chicken outside of the scald tank uh, and you throw him in this plucker. If he's properly scalded, you throw him in this plucker and he's a clean bird with no feathers in 30 seconds. They're highly effective. And when you're trying to do two, 300 birds in a day, you really need to have this to be effective. And, you know, for the cost, this is this is a hell of a deal. 425 bucks. You can't argue with that plucker at that price. That's a great, that's a great buy on that. So we have a plucker. We have a scald tank. Uh, scald tank, I just use a 55-gallon drum. I set up some concrete blocks underneath of it, make a wood fire to heat it up. Start the fire early in the morning. You can keep that 55 gallons going all day. And you can pluck 200, 300 birds uh, before you have to change out the water. So that works out fairly well. And then uh, by the same token, we also will uh, either take a, another uh, barrel, a 55-gallon drum, or we'll take a, a, a stock tank, you know, a regular uh, stock tank like you use for a water, and then fill that with cold water or let cold water run through that. Uh, if you live in hotter climes, you'll need to throw some ice in there as well. Now, I priced this out for one setup and two setups, just to give you an idea. Some of these costs, you don't have to buy every time you set up another setup. In other words, this setup, this one greenhouse uh, with, with this one fencing will take care of 500 chickens. If you want to raise 1,000 chickens, then some of those costs will be, be you know, added to it, but some of those won't. You won't need a second charger. You're not going to need second feed barrels and stuff. Although you'll still need a place to store and to haul your feed. So keep that in mind. 
<clears throat> so our allocated cost is $967 for the first setup. Your actual cost out of pocket is $25.97, but a lot of those components are going to last you a while. The second setup, your cost is $874.51 because you're not replicating all of those expenses. So your total allocated cost for the, your first year uh, is $1,841.67, and your second allocated cost is, or your total, your total cost, your actual money out of pocket is $4,435.12. Okay, I hope you all understand that. If so, we'll move on to the next section. We're going to talk about feed. Uh, Cornish cross, uh, jumbo Cornish cross chickens will eat 20 pounds of feed in their in their eight weeks or so that they're on your farm. 20 pounds per bird. That's an exceptionally good uh, conversion factor. <clears throat> so that's 179 pounds a day on average. Now, obviously, you're not going to feed that much when they're small, but you'll be feeding more than that when they're bigger. I'm just giving a daily average. Uh, 500 chickens over eight weeks, you're burning through 10,000 pounds, 10,000 pounds, five tons of chicken feed. So keep that in mind when you're thinking about manure removal, when you're thinking about you got to go to the get feed and put it in your car and haul it home. Um, it's, uh, it's something to consider. Obviously, the more feed you buy at one time, which puts the hauling and storage charges on you, uh, the cheaper your feed will be. But here's something that was sort of interesting. I called up Tractor Supply, and I went over and I looked, and I found some uh, non-GMO organic, and I'll explain to you why you need to do non-GMO organic chicken feed. And uh, I called them up, and they gave me a price, and it was fifteen fifty-seven a bag. I'm like, oh, okay, all right, well, what kind of a deal will you give me if I buy it by the ton? They said, okay, well, if you buy it by the ton, it's $24.99. Yep, that's right. The bulk price was actually more than their regular advertised price. So I <laughs> realized that isn't going to work. And, and this feed cost, your feed costs are critical. So what I did is I looked at, okay, so if I buy some chick starter, you know, and, and get, them, get them going pretty good to begin with, and then switch over to a, pull, a pullet grower when they're really small to give them some stuff to get going. After that, I can switch them up and go to a much less expensive feed. In this case, you can go to the feed mill and buy 100-pound bags of barley, oats, and wheat, mix that and feed it to your chickens, and they do just fine. Uh, chickens will do better if you have the, the grains rolled or steamed or crimped or something to break them open, but it's not absolutely necessary. Once they get a certain size, they can eat the the whole seed, and that would be a little cheaper, but you're better off having it. You'll have a better conversion ratio and get better bang for your buck to have it rolled or steamed. And so doing it rolled or steamed, I can get it for $13.78 for a 50-pound bag out of which I need 195 bags or 2,600. Anyhow, your total feed cost, $2,770. That's your total feed cost for 500 birds. All right, so let's take a look at our total cost. We have our infrastructure cost of the first setup, 967.16. We have a feed cost of 2,770. Give me a total cost to raise the birds to butcher weight of 3,738.01. <clears throat> and that's going to give us a cost of $8.31. Now, I know that math doesn't work. I'm anticipating a 10% loss in stock between getting them delivered and whatever losses you're going to have on farm. Figure you're going to lose 10% of, of your bird. So if you buy 500, you're going to end up with 450. Uh, it's just the numbers and the way it works out. You can go to tremendous lengths, spending ridiculous amounts of money trying to reduce that number, uh, but you're going to be a whole lot better off if you just accept that number and, and move on. Your second setup, obviously, is going to be a little less because you, you, some of your infrastructure costs are written in at that point, okay? So, eight eight ten. All right. So, there's your cost per bird. Let's look at your marketing costs. Zero, zip, nada, nothing, Okay. What I do for my birds in order to sell my birds is really simple. I put an ad on Craigslist. Doesn't cost anything. I get on the Facebook groups, the, the farm and food groups, or the farm groups, or the homesteading groups, or 
uh, slow food movement groups or anything like that you can find that's in your area. And I start talking about the fact that I'm raising non-GMO, organic, free-range chickens uh, that we will raise and, and pluck and process and be able to deliver fresh um, to the buyer at $15 a bird. And I could sell 10 times what I could raise. I had no problem whatsoever selling birds. Never had to pay for any advertising at all. So don't expect that's going to be a big expense for you if you play your cards right. Now, the key words are free range, non-GMO, organic. Those are the holy trinity of marketing meat chickens. Free range, non-GMO, organic. We let our chickens get out and roam and eat bugs and have a life and be happy chickens. We don't keep them in a cage and raise them up that way. So you end up with a chicken that's maybe not as fat as the one that you would buy at the grocery store, <clears throat> but it's going to have a much more robust flavor and be a much healthier bird. And so therefore your family will be healthier for eating a healthier bird. This sales marketing, this has all got to be part of your dialogue when you're talking to people. Um, because otherwise, you know, they can go buy free range chickens at the grocery store today and not pay 15. They'll pay 13, 14, but not pay 15. I do know some people in some areas that are successful getting as high as 20, 21, $22 a bird. You just got to figure out your market, where you live and what they're willing to accept. So up in Alaska, I was getting $15 a bird and I had no trouble selling them. So, all right, let's go back to the sheet. Excuse me. So no marketing cost. Okay, your processing cost. Yeah, you have to process these birds. As I mentioned before, I like using the um, this plucker here, the yard bird chicken plucker. It works just fine. Um, you need to have labor considerations, okay? And this can make or break your cost on chickens. If you have to hire people... Uh, which you can do. You can hire like four people to come work for you for the day and you can process like, you know, 250 or so chickens a day once they learn what they're doing and, and get to it. They got to get to it. They can't just be sitting around. Um, anyhow, if you don't have the right people to do this, it can break your whole deal financially. Uh, if you have the right people, you can you can do this pretty profitably uh, $10 an hour to hire four people uh, is $320 a day. So you have to figure that cost in. So you take your uh, so 250 birds, it breaks down to $1.28 a bird. So you take your, your cost from here, your $831, which is cost per bird. You add to that your cost for the labor. Add to that plastic bag to put the chicken in and some ice for the chicken, another $0.30. Cents. That raises your price to $9.89 per bird. Okay, the USDA allows an individual to raise up to 20,000 birds a year. That's right. US Duh says I can raise up to 20,000 birds a year and I can raise them without an inspection requirement. All sales must be farm gate sales, meaning that the buyers have to come to the farm to get their birds, no sales to any kind of commercial entity. You can't sell to restaurants, you can't sell to grocery stores. You got to sell to individuals who are just buying chickens direct from you, and they're coming to your farm to pick them up. That's the requirements. I sold my birds for 15. I did not have a labor cost because I had enough family that kicked in and did that. Um, I also had a local microbrew near me where I was able to go and pick up uh, four foot by four foot thousand pound totes full of spent brewer's grain, which, uh, you know, of course, then required that I have a tractor to lift them up and move them because, you know, they would they would set them on the trailer for me, but then I'd have to get them off. Uh, but I, then I was able to feed uh, for free pretty much because the, the chickens, absolutely, chickens and pigs love the brewer's grain. They absolutely loved it. Uh, I imagine horses would too, but I wasn't feeding it to horses at the time. So anyhow, that can greatly imp impact your, your cost. But I'm looking here and giving you the numbers on if you know, you're know buying good quality grain and feed. So so your profit per bird, if you take $9.89, take 15, subtract $9.89 from it, you have $5.11 profit per bird. On 450 birds that you've delivered to people, 
You've made $2,300 profit. You've made $4,694 if you did 1,000 birds at a time, two setups. <clears throat> and you can do this pretty much about four times a year because, you know, you're raising these chickens every eight weeks, so two months. Um, so, you know, eight, eight months out of the year, you've got adequate weather to be uh, producing birds. So uh, there's really no reason why you can't turn that over four times a year. Uh, so if you're doing a thousand birds uh, each time and you do four turns, you're talking about $18,778 profit per year from raising meat chickens. Not too shabby. <clears throat> the meat chickens take about an hour a day, twice a day, an hour in the morning, an hour in the evening, feed and water, check on them, move them around, do whatever needs to be done. Clean up a little, put some new pine shavings down, whatever little maintenance work you've got to do. Uh, it takes about an hour in the morning and an hour in the evening every day. So your work and, and over, if you do four turns, that's 224 days. So you're working a total of 448 hours, not including your processing time. You're working 448 hours. You're making an hourly wage of $41.92 an hour. Pretty awesome. So if you think about it, when we looked at the video we did the last time, when we were talking about getting the land and renting renting the property for, you know, $900 a month and then living there and, and having a little homestead, which I'm sure you can get on in your local Craigslist and look up homes for sale, property for sale, local real estate listings, what have you, find a country home out in the country for rent that has enough land and there's really no reason why you cannot uh, raise enough chickens to pay for your farm and property and 18,000 a year just from two setups. That's a living, you know, four gives you, you know, 36,000 a year if you did four. So you'd be delivering 500 chickens every two weeks. If, you know, it takes a little time to build up your market and build up your customer base. If you're doing a good job, it'll build, but you know, it's quite conceivable that on, you know, and each one of those setups takes 40 by 40, okay? So two of them is 40 by 80 and four of them is 40 by 160. So, you know, still not a whole lot of ground. We're talking about less than a quarter of an acre. You could be running four setups and be making 36,000 net profit a year, which is a living wage. And then you're free to do whatever else you want to do or whatever. I mean, it's very, very, very easy to do. So I just want to kind of show you some setups and different things. Oh, by the way, you can also do this if you wanted to raise ducks. Uh, you could do it raising ducks. You can do it raising geese. And you could do it raising turkeys, all of which are very viable ways of raising poultry. And we did. We raised chickens, turkeys, ducks, and geese and uh, as meat birds and did very well turkeys especially but the problem with turkeys is everybody wants theirs the week before thanksgiving so you've got to be able to process a lot and then that plucker that i showed you that one won't work you'll need a bigger plucker to do turkeys because they literally won't fit in there <clears throat> and and uh we had a uh, oh gosh i don't remember what's what the brand was we had a bigger plucker and, uh, I mean, we actually did a, we did one turkey one year it was 40 pounds, 40 pounds dressed. I mean, after all the feathers came off and the guts came out, it was still for the son of a gun barely fit in the oven. I mean, it was big. So anyhow, that's just some different options that you might want to consider. And, uh, to give you an idea of the setups, you know, again, this is our setup. We had two of these Ohio brooders set up inside this greenhouse and you do have to pay a little attention to temperatures. It warms up during the day. Uh, you may want to open windows, get some ventilation in there. You know, you, you just can't leave them alone. You have to kind of check them a little bit. Um, but it doesn't take a lot, but you do have to check them a little bit. And then, um, let's see, where did I go? No, I don't want that. I don't want this. Where did my pictures go? There they are. Here's some biddies in one of the brooders. You can see the leg there and the way we had it set up. There's some biddies in one of the brooders. Uh, they're they're out there having fun. Here is the delivery of me going and getting some birds. You can see how they were all 
in there having a ball. Here's the setup. Um, this is later on as the, these guys are, uh, but during the summer, it was a little bit warmer. We actually opened the door, rolled back, and then we took a little dog pen and went around the front so these guys could could come over and, and get out. Now, to get them over the log, we put some other firewood on both sides and made a ramp so they could jump up and, and get in and out. Um, these guys tend not to migrate too far. They're, you know, even though you're free range, even though you have them in a 40 by 40 pen and you're claiming free range, you are, in fact, with these because even if you just didn't have any net for them at all, let them go anywhere they wanted to, they're not going to go 40 feet away from this greenhouse. That's just not their nature. So, anyhow, there's a, a view of that. And, you know, when you get done, if it doesn't work out for you, you can always convert your greenhouse back into a greenhouse and use it for your vegetables and to grow a garden. So uh, just something to consider. Um, anyhow, I hope you enjoyed this presentation from Grandpa's Farm. I'm going to have more of this sort of thing as time and uh, services allow. And uh, I hope you'll find this series interesting. We're going to start looking at some other breeds as well. If you go back and look at some of my old videos, I have a series called how I fed myself for a whole year under $250,000. And in there, I did one episode talking about uh, raising chickens and also raising pigs. It was the same kind of breakdown as this. I kind of gave you some of the accounting uh, as to uh, what expenses you're going to have involved, infrastructure costs, materials you need, equipment you need. Uh, I thought it was a pretty in, uh, extensive look at that. Uh, so you might want to go back and check those videos back in my uh in my catalog. You'll see a lot of sailing videos in there as well. Again, I'm a man of two passions. So you're going to find homesteading and sailing stuff on my channel. So don't mean to confuse you. It's just the way it is. But anyhow, guys, I hope you enjoyed all that. Please do like and subscribe. And uh, if there's anything I can do to uh, help you guys down the road, let me know and I'll be happy to jump in and help out. Anyhow, this is Grandpa saying bye. Please do like and subscribe. And please be good to one another. Thanks, kids.